Have Ineos solved the main sheet trimming challenge? What is this traveler contraption? How does it work? We're going to talk through what Ineos are trying to achieve with this and I'll build my own system to explore how it works. Paul Goodison said after the last cup that using controls in the top of the sail was more energy efficient because the sail was less loaded there. But the best sail controls also needed the largest loads moving, which often left Magic short on power. For Barcelona, those energy efficient controls up high are no longer permitted, and the number of humans inputting the power to the boat has been reduced from six to four, although they are cycling. This leans teams with a very real challenge of making energy efficient mainsail trimming systems that affect the changes they want to happen, but with the power they have on tap. The aim of main sheet trimming is when underpowered to produce the best drive to drag ratio. But once overpowered, the aim is then to reduce drag by flattening the sails out and get the maximum drive for the least healing moment. When a gust hits and the boat is overpowered, to stop heel, primarily the tools are traveller and steering. Both reduce the angle of attack on all parts of the sail. So it doesn't flatten the sail and it won't reduce drag and it won't lower the centre of effort. Um, and it can't increase your drive or make you go faster, but it does um, lower your lift and lower your healing moment. There are better tools than these. So first of all, main sheet ease releases leech tension, it increases twist, but the main sails in these boats are incredibly loaded. On dinghies, we just have a boom which holds the foot tension and a kicker which keeps the sail flat. And we couple that with precise strop heights and this works so that easing the first bit of main sheet and creates twist, and then afterwards the kicker holds the boom down and it moves more laterally the boom and the sail like a traveller ease and it keeps it all flat. But um, it's looking increasingly likely that any of the AC75s version 2 will have booms and none of them had a kicker so these tools aren't available. The other one is outhaul and these on the boomless setup kind of reduce the sheeting angle, flattening the foot, opening the leech. Um, it's a bit more of a subtle change and would really need to be done in conjunction with main sheet changes to have the desired effect. And if moving the incredibly loaded main sheet was hard enough, then doing the main sheet and outhaul simultaneously when a gust hit is even harder. So the final control is Cunningham. Now on paper, this control is perfect. The increased use of Cunningham actually in the previous cup was one of the big leaps that Ineos made from the World Series to the Prada Cup. So why not just trim the main solely with Cunningham, pulling it on to twist the sail? Well, the Cunningham works by actually bending, compressing the substantial desection mast, which takes huge loads, uh, up to eight tons. Add on to that the friction of the sails in the mast track, um, and it's a hugely energy sapping endeavour to pull on Cunningham. So what are really us doing with their Traveller? Well, like I said, Traveller is one of the fastest ways to manage heel by um, decreasing the angle of attack of the whole sail. Um, and you can adjust it with high frequency almost preemptively when you see gusts, and that reduces the need for steering, which let's face it, in these kind of three-legged beasts, have their own issues. So the more efficient you can make this traveler system, the more energy you then can preserve for the kind of better controls like Cunningham, which really do more to twist the sail, lower the center of effort, and really increase drive as the wind increases and you run out of writing moment. So Ineos's system here has a hinge track. This allows the track and critically the bearings to always align with the direction of the loading. It reduces friction, reduces wear, um, and coupled with a kind of neat purchase system, uh, which we'll have a go at building shortly, it kind of allows them to adjust their traveler really quick. Now, what's cool about the Ineos system is it's all the deck um, display mounted. Um, 
which kind of seems odd because if this was a ground baking system, why they put it in full view? Well, zooming in on both Luna Rossa and American Magic, and actually both seem to have very similar pivoting main sheet tracks. And it's difficult to see for sure, but it looks like this was also the case on Tiahi as well. I think it's um, also been used on some Hobie cats and jib sheets on high performance boats, so it's nothing new. Um, I would have expected maybe to see it on some sort of like TP52s or inshore racers for the tech to triple up from there in this case, but that doesn't seem to be the case. That's enough of the hinge part of it. I'm going to have a look at the purchase system because that got me really racking my brains. So this is the Ineos Traveller system, which I just kind of can't get my head around the purchase system for moving the traveller car along this track. You've got the two rams on either side, hydraulic rams which are actuating it. Then you've got this hinge and a hinge track. So this track kind of flops forward and backwards to align with the main sheet loads. So that bit I kind of get and understand, but what I don't really understand is how this purchase works here. It looks on first sight to be kind of a reverse three to one. So this block here moves along this track pulled by the ram. Um, and again, got a mirrored setup on the other side. This line is quite a funny arrangement. Dead ends on this block, then it goes round. And this is actually still part of the three to one, but it goes off to a central takeoff, which is connected to the other side of the boat but doesn't actually break the three to one. It just kind of like takes a dog leg out of the three to one to take up slack in it. it. Comes back around this kind of like friction eye, round the block again, then up here. And these blocks are just kind of turning points now. So that's a turning point and then a turning point up here. The point of this is to align with the hinge so that as the hinge moves, the traveler doesn't move along the track. As this block moves, it takes up three times the amount of lines. So this moves three times as quickly as this ram. But what I don't really get is this kind of like take up system that goes across to the other side of the boat. I've drawn a schematic of what this looks like. So in the middle, you've got the traveler car here, which moves back and forth. Um, red is the kind of hydraulic rams and you've got a block with a three to one system with the dog leg out of it. I don't really see how when both these rams are locked off the traveller can't still just move across the boat. This is kind of like a simplified schematic I'm going to attempt to build to just have a play around with it. So I just kind of removed some of the extra turning points. Effectively you still got take up which is linked in the three to one system. I think it's a friction around here, which is stopping this whole system just moving around. But yeah, honestly, I just don't really understand how this works. So I'm gonna build myself up a little version of it and have a play. So looking at this, it just basically doesn't work. The traveler just seems to move around freely. The only thing stopping it from moving about when the rams are fixed is friction. There must be something I'm missing here and I think it's the simplified schematic I've drawn. If we add back in the slack line at the back of the boat between fixed blocks so it can only move a certain distance that kind of take up i think that's the key to what's happening here let's go back and remake this little model this is the latest iteration this works as a differential so that the traveler always drops to the leeward side once this blocks out here so imagine this is the stern of the boat, the sails here, and we're sailing on Darbord tack. So this traveller wants to drop down to leeward, blocks out here, this differential, and this is just working on a three to one ratio like that. If we replicate what would happen in attack, 
So you've been trimming on this side. The boom would be maybe just off, that's the center line, maybe boom just off the center line. You've been trimming the traveler. You go for attack. This will just drop down to the leeward side, ready for the exit of the new tack. And then you just start trimming on this side with your three to one. So it just works like a kind of a nifty um, differential. It all makes a lot more sense now. and I'm kind of satisfied through building it out myself that I understand how it works. And that's quite a neat system for Minios. Now, the hinge track we know other teams have. We don't know whether other teams have this differential, but I kind of assume they must. Ineos wouldn't put it on the deck if it wasn't kind of common knowledge. I also wonder, are there other boats that you're aware of that have this sort of um, differential on the traveller system? or some of the system on the boat. Um, it must be pretty common, but I just hadn't seen it before. I hope that's been interesting for you, a little insight into how my mind works. A little bit frustrated, I couldn't just visualize it working straight off. Anyway, the process hopefully was entertaining. And if you found this video interesting or insightful, then please subscribe to the channel. And I'll be seeing you in the new year for lots more America's Cup tech content. Have a great break and see you around.